good morning students today we are going to discuss one interesting chapter that is pastoralists in the modern world from history you have studied a number of people a number of profession throughout the pages of history you know that since time immemorial many people have adopted a variety of professions and we know regarding the agriculturists the artisans the craft person and also the artist and the business community but one section of people those who are remain aloof from the mainstream of research and study are the pastoralists they are a group of people those who are moving from one place to other in search of pastures in different parts of india as well as the world and today it we have to study regarding these pastoralists in the modern world and you see this is what the profession one of the ancient profession adopted practiced by different people all over the world so what is pastoralism pastoralism an occupation adopted in societies in india and africa and with passage of time though agriculture industry and service sector is rapidly dominating but it has its relevance during the colonial time as well as in modern times so it has its relevance even today so who are pastoralists pastoralists are those people who hard lifestyle often as nomadic wanderers without a set or specified park area these people have no specific area where they are settled down they move from one place to other that is why they are called nomads or nomadic pastoralists pastoral nomads are those who with their lifestyle migrate in an established territory to find pasturage for their animals with the change of the seasons they are the pastoralists you see now we have to study who are the pastoralists in india where did they settle where from which place they are coming and going we have to know regarding them you see in india we have a variety of land forms the mountainous region the plains the deserts the plateaus the swamp areas and everywhere we find a number of pastoral communities and today we will also know about their movement and also their activities their lifestyle pastoral is in india you see in mountainous region in mountainous region of jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh and uttarakhand garhwal and kumaon region we have a number of pastoral groups who are they in mountains jammu and kashmir the gujjar bagrawals himachal pradesh we have gaddi safars in garhwal and kumaon gujjar cattle herders in himalaya region we have butiyas serpas and kinnoris in the plateau region of our country like maharashtra the dhangars who are both serpas and also the buffalo herders in karnataka and andhra the gola the cattle herders and also the kurmas and kurvas who are rearing sheep and goats in plains of up punjab rajasthan mp maharashtra the banjaraj are found in the desert area of rajasthan like jodhpur bikaner jaisalmer barmer etc we have the raikas who are camel herders as well as the moru raikas who are sheep and goat herders 
Apart from that, in the swampy areas of the rare curves in Gujarat, we have the Malvari Hadars. And now we move to know about the lifestyle, the movement of the Gujar Bakaralas of Jammu and Kashmir. They move in groups up and down known as a kafila. Actually, the Gujar Bakaralas came in 19th century to Jammu and Kashmir and over decades they came here and also get themselves settled in that particular area and from that area because of the season because of the cold and snowfall they used to come down and when the summer comes they used to move upward crossing the Pir Punjab Pass their movements are governed by cold and snow. In the winter season, they move down to the low hills of the Siwalik range of the Himalayas. This another pastoral group are the Gaddi Sephards of Himachal Pradesh. They spend their winter in the low Siwalik hills and in summer in the Lahul and Spiti region of the Himachal Pradesh. And they are, where they are staying, their settlement is called Dhas. D-H-A-R-S, Dhas. When the snow melted, they move to the water, summer meadows on high mountains. Another, here whenever they are staying in a lowland and spiti water, they are rearing their seed and also harvesting. Whatever cultivation they have made in that particular area during their halt period. Another group of what the pastoralists are from the Gujar cattle herders of Gadwa and Kumayun, now known as Uttarakhand. They spend their summer in the Bugiyars. Bugiyars are, you see, this is Bugiyar, the vast meadows in the high mountains. And they spend their winter in the Bhabar, a dry forested area. You see, this is Bhabar, in the foothills of Gadwal and Kumayan. In course of their journey, at about more than 10,000 to 11,000 feet height, these Gaddi Sabhars used to put a build some mandapas. Some mandapas which are made out of a grass, a hill grass that is called what? Ringer. And with all these grasses available in that area, they constructed the house there and also stayed there and used to what? Live for some time. Another mountain pastoralists are the Budhyas, the Sarpas, the Kinnuris of Himachal Pradesh. The, they follow the cyclic movement according to the seasonal changes and makes the best use of the available pastures at different places in that region. You see, they are what? The Bhutiyas, the Sarpas, and this is the Kinnur in Himachal Pradesh, a beautiful place. Understood? Now we will come to the pastoralist in the plateau area. In the Deccan plateau, a central plateau, a dry area is there. And here, the entire area of Maharashtra, you see, Maharashtra and parts of Telangana, parts of MP are covering, the parts of Karnataka are covering this central plateau area. And the Dhangas, are the most important pastoral community of this area. They stay in the central plateau during the monsoon. In October, they used to move with their horse towards the Konkan region and manure the fields laying hackam between the Kharif harvest and the beginning of Ravitra. They retreated back to Maharashtra as soon as the monsoon occurs. They are the sheep herders as well as the buffalo herders. The buffalo 
prefers to water. Stay at the center, the swampy area, because they need water. This is the, you see, this area is the movement area of water, the Dhangar community. And in Konkan, the Dhangars are in high demand. The Konkan pigeons are offering them grains and other commodities just to manure their field. So that is why they are attracted westwards to the Goa, Goa region, Konkan region to manure the fields of water, the Konkan pigeons. Another group, the Banjaras, they are the pastoral groups of the plains of UP, Punjab, Rajasthan, MP, Maharashtra. You see, they are the Banjara cattle herders. Banjara pastoralists and the cattle, you see. They used to move to different places in search of good pasture. Pasture land, even long distances they can also cover off. They also sell plow cattle and other goods to the villagers in exchange for grain and fodder. The Banjars. Now we come to another group of pastoralists in the Plateaus that is called the, what the Gulas, the Gurumas, and the Guruvas of Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. You see the Gulas, the Gurumas, the Guruvas. Normally the Gulas herd cattle, you see cattle. Golaj used to live near the woods and in the dry periods they moved to the coastal tracks in search of pastures. The Kurmas and the Kurvas reared sheep and goats and sold woven blankets to the local people. They used to live near the woods, cultivated small patches of land and Beretto Petty Trades. You see, another group of pastoralists are found in the desert areas of Rajasthan. They are the Raikas and another Maru Raikas. The desert areas include Bikaner, Barmer, Jodhpur, Jaisalmer, etc. And these people, they combined cultivation along with the pastoralism. Then during Manshur, the Raikas of Barmer, Jaisalmer, Jodhpur and Bikaner stayed in their home villages where pasture was plentifully available. When their grazing ground becomes dry, they move to new and greener pastures. The Maruraikas herded both camels and another group herd sheep and goats. The Maruraika settlement is called Dhande. You see, they are the Raikas pastoral community of the desert area of Rajasthan. You see camel. And you see, they are rearing this sheep. And this area is called Dhandi. The Maru Raikas used to settle in that particular area where they are undertaking a variety of activities apart from pastoral activities. Another group of pastoral communities are the Maudharis of Ranapkats in Gujarat. The Ranapkats is a swampy area in Gujarat. And in this swampy area, the Maldari pastoralists are found. You see, this man is a Maldari, what a leader, pastoral leader. And they are the, what a sheep, they are herding sheep. They are usually rearing sheep. Their movement is also according to the seasonal cycle of nature in that particular area. They used to move in search of pasture from one area to the other area. However, due to the advent of the colonial authorities in our country, a change had taken place in the lifestyle of the pastoralist as well as the livelihood of the pastoralist. What kind of changes occurred? We have to examine one after the other. You know, the British colonial authorities came to our country not for trade only. After trade, they occupied our territory and after occupying the territory, they are badly searching for a variety of sources to generate income from our country. And they targeted the land of our country and from the land, they wanted to bring entire land under cultivation. 
from where they could get produce as well as income. That is why the Britishers from time to time had brought some regulations by virtue of which the pastoral area, the pastures in our country brought under their direct control. You see, various laws are enacted to bring pastures and pastoralists under colonial control. One such important law was the Wasteland Rules, which brought all uncultivated land, including grazing land, forest land, etc., directly under government control. The grazing lands were transformed to cultivated lands from which land revenue was collected by the British government. Some grazing lands were given on auction to select individuals who later became village headmen from whom money was collected by the colonial authorities. Apart from this Westland rule, there also passed another rule, another act which is called the Forest Act. By virtue of this act, the British government had brought entire forest of our country under their control. They classified the forest area into two categories. One is called the reserve forest, another is called the protected forest. Through these forest arts, entire forest area was classified into two categories. Reserve forest, where entry was completely prohibited, and protected forest, where entry was allowed for observance of customary rights with strict monitoring of the movement of pastoralist by the British forest officer. Violation of these forest arts was attracting financial penalty and other harassments by the colonial officers as well as but employees. Another important act which was passed by the colonial authority was the Criminal Tribes Act in 1871. The Britishers thought that only they can exercise their control over a settled people. As the pastoralists used to move from one area to other area, they were not brought under their control. So that is why. These pastoralists, including some craft person, some traders, some business community, they were considered as nomadic what tribes and they were suspicious by the British government. Their activities, their movement and all their what area in which they were passing through was brought under the suspicious nature of the British rule. You see, nobody pastoralists were subjected to suspicion by the British officials as they have no specific identity or permanent address of residence. They are suspected as criminals and to regulate their movement and activities, the Criminal Tribes Act 1871 was passed. A vigil watch was kept on them by village police so that all the activities can be properly monitored by the colonial authorities. Another important tax which was collected by the colonial authorities in our country was the grazing tax. The colonial government imposed a grazing tax on the pastoralists which was frequently high. Collection of grazing tax was given on auction to contractors to enhance the revenue on the part of the colonial authority. Sometimes the British officials also involved in collecting this tax by issuing individual pass or permit to the pastoralist for getting more income, you see, this is the grazing land. So here, under the colonial rule, what some changes had taken place in the life and the livelihood of the pastoralists. What changes, what impact did it have on the life of the pastoralist? First of all, it had severe shortage of pasture. Intensive overgrazing on the same pasture, land reduced the quality of pasture. Scarcity of fodder led to ill health, disease and death of the cattle flock. 
the reduction in number of cattle, change of cattle movement to new areas have taken place. Adoption of settled life and engagement in other professions, trade and even labor work by the pastoralists was what happened. Actually at that time, the pastoralists, those who used to move to Karachi and Sindh region, now they are searching for new areas in Haryana. And they what also opted other professions so as to sustain their livelihood. Another important pastoral community also found in Africa, you see. Africa, it is a very big what, continent next to Asia. And here, a number of pastoral communities are there. And here, about 22 million people are involved in pastoral activity. Among them are the Bedouins, the Berbers, the Maasai, the Somali, the Bora and Turka. These are the prominent pastoral communities. And what they are doing there? They raise cattle, camels, goat, sheep, and donkeys, as well as sell milk, meat, animal skin, and wool. Some are also combining pastoral activity with agriculture, trade, transport, and other odd jobs to sustain their lives. Understood? And among all these pastoral communities of Africa, one important pastoral community is the Maasai. Maasai meaning my people and they are staying to the east of Africa which was under the occupation of the colonial authorities. And by 1885, after an agreement between the European powers, after a protracted struggle, the but colonial masters have divided entire Africa among themselves. And out of this division, the Maasai land was also divided between the British colonial masters as well as the German colonial masters. And that is why the Maasai land, you see, this area, this area, the eastern part of what Africa, East Africa, that was brought under the control of the Britishers as well as the Germans. The Maasai, meaning my people, are found in East Africa, Southern Kenya and Tanzania, are primarily cattle herders. In 19th century, after a fight per territory among different European powers in Africa, the area of Mass Island has divided into different colonies. The best grazing land of this area became white settlements, cultivated land, national parks like Samburu and Amboseli in Kenya and Serengeti Park in Tanzania. And also as games reserved like Maasai Mara in Kenya. And this control of colonial masters over the Maasai land as well as the Maasai community had brought drastic changes in their lifestyle as well as had also affected their livelihood. How? You see, loss of grazing land for their livestock. Their movement restricted, confined to a fixed area and in special reserves. Continuous grazing in a specific area led to the deterioration of the quality of pastures. Shortage of pasture during droughts led to ill health, disease and death of animal flock in a large number. Colonial rule also affected the tradition of a Maasai society. Actually, the Maasai society was enjoying a lot under the leadership of their elders and under the protection of the young warriors. But the colonial rule had exercised their evil designs, interfered in their traditional society and also brought down their what, living standards and pushed them to what, different activities and dissolving their traditional societal trends. The Maasai society, you see, they are the elders, they are the youngest. Traditionally divided into two groups as elders, they are the elders 
and warriors they are the warriors you see the weapon they are wearing the elders form the ruling group exercise authority decide the community affairs and settle disputes the warriors consisted with the young men used to defend the community and organize cattle raids on other either to exercise their supremacy over other pastoral communities in that particular area you see under the impact of colonialism so many changes have taken place in the maasai society what are the changes taken place in maasai society the british colonial authorities interfered in the traditional affairs of maasai in order to administer their affairs new chiefs of various sub groups were appointed by the colonial authorities these chiefs were reached and also had both a pastoral and non pastoral income and therefore remain on affected during crises and drought like situations the poor pastoralists were affected by colonial policies droughts famine and war and finally pushed to the labor market as designed by the colonial masters they became slaves they became what laborers what were the changes that taken place in maasai society the traditional difference based on age between the elders and the warriors was restored in new dis new distinction between the rich and poor pastoralist developed actually what a new distinction rich pastoralist and poor pastoralist came into being the traditional distinction elders and youngers now what over that was a normal among the maasai and that happened due to the interference of the colonial masters especially the britishers in what the maasai what area however in spite of all these you see the pastoralist have their relevance even today to sum up our entire discussion we can say pastoralism was indeed a way of life and an economic activity which has its relevance even in modern times in many hilly and dry regions of india as well as the world the colonialism attempted to push them to oblivion but their tradition and timely movements keeps them and their profession at a center stage of attention and attraction for study by the researchers and environmentalists in modern times you see now the pastoralists are what becoming a center of attraction for political party for government now they are what placing their demands for rights for getting advantage from the side of the government and the government after the kargil war of 1999 have also paid proper attention to bring these pastoral communities to the mainstream of our society marking them as an important community in the life and the economy of our country that is all about the chapter pastoralist in the modern world